Welcome to Terracom's online course, the PSTN. In this course, we'll understand the public switch telephone network and plain ordinary telephone service, or POTS. Though voice over IP, SIP, and broadband internet will eventually replace the PSTN and its circuit-switched, channelized, and analog technologies, understanding POTS and the PSTN remains one of the cornerstones of a complete understanding of telecom. It's tempting for newcomers to telecom to think, well, this is old stuff, we don't need to know this, it's all voice over IP now. But it's not difficult to come up with a list of reasons why understanding POTS and the PSTN is still necessary. There are hundreds of millions of POTS lines still in service, still being maintained, and still generating revenue for carriers. This will not disappear overnight, but will continue to be supported for many years to come until the last POTS line is finally disconnected. Broadband internet service is provided using DSL modems over the wires that were put in place for POTS. Even if we were able to move to an all voice over IP network, at least the last foot will still be analog. At residences, a cable modem or fiber terminal performs the functions of a POTS line card. Power, dial tones, ringing, and analog signals to regular phones via the telephone wires inside the house. At a business, the analog digital conversion might happen inside a VoIP telephone plugged onto the LAN, but the signals on the curly cord attached to the handset are still going to be analog. Many VoIP systems digitize voice at 64 kilobits per second, a bit rate that's directly related to the voice band defined for analog POTS. Legacy Sonnet and SDH fiber optic transmission infrastructure are both organized into 64 kilobit per second channels. And there's a huge inertia of regulations, tariffs, accounting, and money involved in the interconnect between local exchange carriers, the last mile, and competing inter-exchange carriers, long distance, that's based on tandem access trunks, channelized PSTN circuit switch technology. Understanding channels and circuit switching is still necessary to know how a phone call from a cell phone on a wireless network connects to a phone plugged into a competitor's cable modem in another city. The overall goal of this course is to understand how the physical network is organized, the characteristics of basic telephone service, how calls are established end-to-end, -end, and to demystify common telephony jargon and buzzwords. Lesson 1 is the introduction to the course. That would be this one. Lesson 2 is a brief history lesson, beginning with the invention of the telephone. This will establish the concept of local telephone companies, access circuits, and intercity transmission. Next, we'll understand the fundamentals of the PSTN, customer premise and central office, loops, trunks, circuit switching, and understand how a telephone call is connected end-to-end. -end. Then we'll understand how information is represented on the local loop using analog techniques in traditional telephony, and just what exactly we mean by analog. Next is the question of fidelity how faithfully the voice is reproduced at the far end, which is determined by the frequency bandwidth provided on the access known as the voice band. The voice band, loops, trunks, and circuit switching are all aspects of plain, ordinary telephone service. We'll round out the discussion by understanding some of the other key aspects of POTS and related jargon and buzzwords like twisted pair. We'll then look at an improvement on the address signaling mechanism for POTS that was called Touchtone, or more technically DTMF. Finally, we'll understand in broad brush strokes the control system for the telephone network called SS7 in North America and basic principles of call routing. After all the lessons are completed, there's the course exam, which is 10 multiple choice questions. Upon completion of this course, you'll be able to explain why telecom networks are divided into local access wiring and long-distance transmission, 
the founding, breakup, and reemergence of AT&T in the U.S., TELUS and Bell in Canada, a basic model for the PSTN and its main components, loops, why they're called loops and why there's a maximum loop length, the outside plant, circuit switching, central office and customer premise, how and why remotes are used, fiber to the neighborhood, plain ordinary telephone service, what analog is and how it relates to copper wires, electricity, circuits and sound, how microphones and speakers work, the human hearing range, whether trees falling in the forest if no one is there to hear them cause a sound, the voice band, how and why the telephone system can limit frequencies to the voice band, why two wires are used and why they're twisted together, twisted pair, tip and ring, minus 48 volts, supervision, dial tone, ringing, lightning protection, dial up, touch tone and DTMF, basics of SS7, and examples of sophisticated call routing using SS7. Here we'll go over some instructions for using the MyTerracom learning management system. On a tablet or phone, the best experience may be achieved by going full screen. Click the full screen icon under Settings in Chrome. The course is composed of a number of lessons, which are loaded onto your computer one at a time by clicking the corresponding link on the menu of available lessons for the course on your MyTerracom Learning Management System dashboard. Each lesson begins with an overview and discussion of the lesson objectives. Then the lesson is presented in several parts, followed by several quiz questions to help ensure you understood key points. The skip forward and back buttons at the bottom of the screen may be used to navigate back and forth between parts of this lesson, and the slider also works. Play, pause, and mute buttons are also located at the bottom of the screen. You can go back through a lesson as many times as you like. You can close your browser, then log back in the next day or the next month, and you'll restart the same lesson until you click the Finish Lesson button to move to the next lesson. When you're finished a lesson, click the Finish Lesson button to go to the next lesson. After clicking Finish Lesson, please wait to see a screen with a large green check mark. This is confirmation back from the learning management system that your progress has been recorded. If it's been more than 30 minutes since you started the lesson, your session on the server may have timed out and you may see an error message. In that case, just log back in to continue. You can take any lesson anytime by setting the last lesson completed value on the lessons page to the appropriate value. Let's get started.